executive director of the college football playoff, Rich Clark, uh, joining us here on site. Thanks for joining us. This is such an interesting time here for the college football playoff. Now with the expansion, take us through um, really now the, the changes that everybody will see, not just with teams, the number of teams, but also how this format's going to work because uh, this will take a little bit, uh, a little bit of time for people to get used to. Yeah, you're right, Josh, and, and thanks for having me. Um, you're right. It is. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I think we have a good process down, and uh, it's going to be spectacular. Uh, you know, this is something fans have been asking for for a long time. So I think this is a great move, and and it's going to really give us a chance to let the decisions of who's the best team in college football be decided on the field. And so the way it'll work, as everyone is pretty well familiar, I think, with the selection committee, that's the 13 experts, their coaches, their athletic directors, their former players, people that know college football, and they're going to go through that process over the course of five weeks ranking the top 25 teams. Then those teams will be placed in the 12-team bracket, or, you know, the, the top 12. But – Five of those um, teams are going to be um, in the bracket. They're going to be the conference, the five highest-ranked conference champions. Mm-hmm. So they will be picked. They will be put into the bracket. The top four of them will get a bye. So that will be one through four. The fifth conference champion, um, if they're ranked in the top 12, they'll be seated at where they were ranked. If they're not ranked in the top 12, they'll be seated number 12. And then there'll be seven other teams by ranking that will be the uh, at-large teams that will fill the bracket. Right. And then they'll start playing the games. And the first round of games is going to be spectacular. It's going to be on campus. Yeah. Uh, those teams 5 through 8 will play teams 9 through 12. And they will play at the, uh, at the campus site. That's going to be amazing. For, for some campuses, it might be the biggest game they've ever had on their campus. Yep. And then the, uh, the quarterfinals and semifinals will be in the New Year's Six Bowls. And then we'll have the, the amazing college uh, football playoff championship game. This year will be in Atlanta. Uh, it's going to be great. So. You know, I, I think there's a couple of questions. I mean, you, you were just at Air Force not that long ago. So yes, I, I think you a have, month ago. <laughs> I know. So you have a, a, a soft spot here for these group of five conferences and, and access. My first one, and, and this is more for clarification, if a conference like, let's say, Mountain West, they are that number five conference champion, does that satisfy the quote-unquote AQ for, for the group of five schools? Well, there's no, there's no, there is no so other that, AQ. So that's so gone. That yeah, the only AQs are those top five champions. Got it. And so whether I mean, and that those aren't determined by what conference they're in. It's just there's going to be, you know, uh, nine conference champions and the top five. Whether they're in, you know, regardless of who they are, those top five will be the AQs. The rest are just seven at-large teams based on the selection committee rankings. I I know Gloria talked yesterday about access. Um, Do you feel like this betters the access for the Mountain Wests, the Conference USAs, the Americans, so on and so forth, to have a better shot at competing for a championship? I do. I do. I think it it gives teams a shot. And for for the uh, for the teams uh, for the G5, mm-hmm. if you know if that's how we want to refer to it, um, there'll be five conference champions that will vie, you know, that'll be able to vie for that. Maybe it's one of them. Maybe it's two. You know, ne- you never yeah. know, right? But there will be a team from the group of five that's going to be in the in the playoff, and and that's awesome, right? Yeah, to at be, least one team. To be clear, by the way, Oregon State, Washington State, they're going to be considered independents here. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, one of the things that gets brought up here is the future of the format. I mean, we're always hearing reports that conferences want different things, and with conference expansion and, and, and sometimes subtraction, that there's there always seems to be this different need, and it seems to change almost by the month, depending on, on who's putting these reports out. Um, how is that being handled within the membership here Um that helps determine the college football playoff. And, of course, television contracts have a big part of that. How, how is that being handled? So it, 
you know, there's always a lot of ideas on how to improve the playoff. Mm-hmm. And we, we always have to be forward-looking, right? We have to look at ways to get better. But I think the, the position that we're taking right now, the commissioners um, really want to just have an opportunity to make this playoff this year spectacular and then to be able to assess afterwards and see, okay, what worked, what didn't, how can we get better? And so I think right now any kind of changes to the format are, are really tabled, I'll, I'll say, okay. and let's just focus on making this amazing. And then we can take a look at it. If there's something else that we need to do, if there's changes that need to happen, we can do that after the season because we'll have time, right, to assess and maybe make some adjustments. But um, until we know how this goes, we're just going to uh, hold fast and, and make this great. We're talking with Rich Clark, executive director of the college football playoff, joining us from Mountain West Media Days. Everybody asks about metrics. There are people that believe that the metrics kind of change every year on how you determine what that top 25 looks like. And as you said, sometimes sometimes people don't realize that top 25, after it's released, it's thrown in the trash and you do a brand new top 25, right? right. So uh, the metrics, and I think specifically for the, the G5s, when you're trying to figure out you know, which one of those conference champions makes it into that top five. What should people know about how you judge that? What is that metric, uh, or what are those metrics that will help kind of solidify who belongs? Yeah, that that's a great question, Josh. And there's a lot of things that go into this. But it's a it's a, a pretty scripted protocol, not, not the decision, not trying to tell people how to think about this, but really – what things we should be looking at, like strength of schedule, like head-to-head competition, just the eye test of, you know, of the teams for, for these experts to really look at these teams and judge them fairly. And I will say that the selection committee members take this so seriously, and they prepare before they come in the door. I got to watch the selection committee last year do, uh, do what they do, and I was thoroughly impressed. I, I you know, being a military guy, I, you know, I'm sitting in the room. You're a process guy. I, I am. I totally <laughs> am. But I watched the discipline that they took and the integrity that they uh, brought into the room, and they made some hard calls. And it was not – they agonized. They agonized over some of the some of the tough calls that they had to make. But they're looking at – there's a lot of metrics. There's a lot of data that they bring into uh, into the decision process. But I think they do a very good job of synthesizing all that information into, in the end, their job is to pick the best teams. It's not who has the best record. There's no, like, one thing that is going to drive this. It's, in their view, who are the best teams at that moment that they're doing this ranking. When looking at the G5s and strength of schedule, how difficult can that be? Because everybody's strength of schedule, I mean, at least now, you don't have to compare strength of schedule even more so between a, 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 a power five and, or a power four and a group of five. You've kind of separated that. It's not like basketball where you're, where you're comparing schedules and non-conference and all that stuff. Um, but as you kind of noticed it, because Liberty last year was one that was, was talked about quite a bit, is there even a struggle in comparing strength of schedule to record in the eye test even amongst the, 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 the G5 schools? Yeah, I, so I think that um, the formula, I'll say, uh, for determining strength of skill, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing, right? right? And, and you, you, you nailed it there. Um, but I do think that these, these experts and, and the information that they have and the data that they have to sort of help discern, you know, what level the strength of schedules are and, and where they are um, is, is pretty good data. But here's here's where it gets it gets tough is there's the margin between you know one school strength of schedule and the school that's right below them you know in that ranking of strength it's it's such a thin margin and that's where the the uh, selection committee really has to use their judgment you know and go well we're not gonna I mean you got one team that maybe is has the 13th toughest schedule and then you got the 14th toughest schedule. How much difference is really between those two schools? Well, the selection committee, they have to look at the whole picture, and they just have to bring it all into their sort of judgment and their cross-check to, to figure out who's really the best team. So it, it's there's a lot of science involved, 
but there's more art uh, yeah. in this than, than probably science. And that's why you bring these experts in. Some people say, well, you should just use data. Just, just crunch it out. There's computers that can tell this. Well, yeah, the computers can do the science part, but there's an art to this. And, and that eye test and sort of understanding football, um, that has to be brought in. You have to have the human in the loop on this. Because uh, this is a human endeavor. It's a human sport played by human beings, and it should be judged by human beings. And, and so I, I think we have a, a pretty good process to, to do this. By the way, uh, this is a, a good prep for you making the rounds here because once we get to, was it late October, I know. Uh, Rich is going to be talking to Reese Davis every week on the ESPN uh, college football playoff reveal shows. So um, have fun with that, and thanks yeah. for making us one of your uh, one of your test runs. I appreciate it, Josh. Thank you for that, and aloha to your whole uh, your whole fan base there. So awesome. Thanks we for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yes, uh, Rich Clark, college football playoff executive director, uh, joining us here for Mountain West Media Days.